This method easily allows you to change your video footage into any animated style of your choosing. And the best part about this, you don't have to draw every single individual frame. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I'm going to try and make this one quick. I really just want to pass on this information to you. I want to show you some of the things that you can do, some of the tools that you can use to make your life a lot easier to be able to create any which type of animated thing. We're going to be talking about uh, some of these animated videos created by Joel Haver, awesome guy, uh, super funny short films. I recently got recommended one of his videos and I was looking at these animated videos and the style of them and I thought that it had a very unique style. I love how all these animated characters, they have some uh, human element to them and that's because they're generated using AI, specifically a tool we've talked about a bunch on this channel, EBSynth. With this tool, you can take one still from your video, draw on it, do anything you want in Photoshop, and then apply that specific style to your entire video using that AI software. It's extremely powerful. Joel Haver actually has an entire uh, tutorial here talking exactly about how he animates these videos. So props to him. I think there's an exact quote from this video. Art should be in the hands of everyone. And I love that mindset. I feel the exact same way. If you guys want to, I'm going to leave this link below if you want to see him explain it. Um, we'll do a quick playthrough and then I'm going to go through, show you step by step using EBSynth, using the exact same tools. So again, just passing information and showing you guys how you can record any type of video, whether it's a music video, whether it's sketch comedy, and apply this creative element onto it and create your own animations easy. We've used EBSynth a lot. In my last tutorial I uploaded a couple of days ago, we talked about Jalix Rosa creating these insane anime style transformations. Uh, like you can see right here and he uses EB synth as well so i want to make another video talking about EB synth and just reiterating how you can use some of these ai tools to really bring your ideas to life in different ways so enough of my explanation let's hop into how you can actually do this yourself again the purpose of these videos is never to teach someone's specific style i want to teach you the tools so that you can apply your own creativity and learn build and develop from these specific tools so to be able to actually do this yourself you can either of course Shoot your own reference video yourself. You can do this in front of a green screen or without a green screen. The key here is to make sure there isn't a ton of movement. We are using an AI software. So if there's a ton of movement, you may need to go in and piece some different things together. So to make your life easier, try and keep it minimal movement. If there is a ton of movement in your reference, you may get a bit of this uh, EB synth. For example, you can see a tiny bit of it uh, right here. But of course, those are things you can easily fix. All right, everybody, so let's get started here. You could, of course, use any royalty-free footage. I'm actually going to use some footage that I shot here myself. It just comes down to what you want to do and if you want more preparation. So let me just drag in uh, these files here. This was my intro clip that I took at the beginning, and I just turned off my background, so it should be a bit easier to isolate everything. You can do this within Adobe Premiere or After Effects. I'm sure most video editing softwares will allow you to do this. You just need to export this video as a PNG sequence. So in Premiere, you can go up to File, Export, Media. For your format here, you can just click that, go down to PNG, and then go ahead for output name, just find where you want to export this. You wanna make sure you create a folder for the export. So I'll name this Tutorial Export. And this is an important part of the workflow. You always wanna make sure you're placing everything in different folders and try and stay relatively organized. Put a file name there, click export. I also should say whenever I did record this, I was trying to be mindful of um, not being too animated, not moving around too much, trying to keep my eyes open so that I could get a nice clean track when I do use that AI software. All right, so our export is complete. Let's go ahead and open up Photoshop to start having some fun with this, designing the look and feel we want for the animation. We're only gonna have to draw on a couple of frames depending on if there are errors. So let's start with the first frame here. In the tutorial video Joel Haver made, he talks a little bit about his process and how he goes about drawing his characters with outlining everything. But I don't want you to limit yourself to one specific style. There's millions of different tutorials for Photoshop out there. So have fun, experiment. So I'm gonna click open here within Photoshop and I'll navigate to the PNG sequence as you can see all of these different PNG images for our video. And I'll just open up the very first image here. And I think there's a bit of a pause before when I actually start speaking. So let's go back in here and see if there's a better frame I can start with. So we'll start with this one right here. 
So in the bottom right, I'm going to create a new layer within Photoshop by clicking this button. So this is the original template. This is going to be our drawing layer. I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush tool here over on the left. You want to make sure in the top left for your brush and click and under the general brushes, I'm just using the hard round brush for this type. And to make this a bit easier, it's kind of tough doing everything with a mouse. I like using one of these cheap Wacom tablets that I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. I've been using this for any um, video where I've been drawing or need some sort of illustration. Also keep in mind, I'm not the best at drawing here. You don't have to be an expert. You can use your bracket keys here just to make this larger or smaller. And what I'm going to do is first just outline You can hold down space bar, click just to drag this around. Also, feel free to use any reference images if you are creating a specific style. If your lines are ever a bit shaky, it helps to hold down control and alt and just use your mouse wheel. The more you zoom in, the easier I find it to be to make your lines a bit clearer and uh, more exact. Now, some more little shortcuts here. If you click X on your keyboard, you can switch between your foreground color and your background color. You can always just click and uh, use the eyedropper if you really need to change that. Or of course, you can just use a custom color. So I'll click X, draw the outline of the eye here. Another thing you can do is use your paint bucket tool right here. So if I hold down right there, you can see you might have the gradient or one of these other ones showing. Just make sure you have your paint bucket tool and you can just easily fill in anything that is enclosed within your lines like that. Now, if you ever cover anything up, you can always hide the visibility here. Um, or you can even just lower the opacity just so you can kind of see the reference underneath. I'll try and place the microphone in here. And then we'll go ahead and do the skin. So you can again always use your picker here to actually do the hair first. All right. And then we will do the skin color. So again, use your picker. You can use your paint bucket tool to fill that in. There you go. Just a rough drawing. Again, you guys probably have. Um, way better drawing skills than I do. But either way, let's go ahead and just change the background to green. And I'm going to create a new layer to do that. So on the bottom right, I'll click new layer, name that backgrounds, drag that to the very bottom. And then with my paint bucket tool, I'll just click hide the reference here so we can see through that. And then you guys can make any adjustments. Now anything here that's bleeding through like the green, for example, we're going to remove this green um, once we bring it back in. If, it, if you really want to, you can go through here and just try and make any more brush adjustments. Another little trick here, if there's still some green bleeding through, you can select your drawing layer, click Control J to duplicate it. And then we'll just drag this underneath. And then on that duplicated layer, we'll go up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and it should fill in some of those spaces behind. So that looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and file export, export as, and PNG is fine. It should be matching the width and height. Click export. So you should have your PNG export we did at the beginning. What we're going to do here is we're going to name this key and we're going to name it the number and we're going to name it the number after the frame that we painted over. So this was tut number 27. So frame 27. So I'll name this key 27. All right. Now you guys can go ahead and download EB Synth. It is a free AI software like I talked about earlier. Once you download it, you just need to open up the application like this and to start setting this all up. We're going to go ahead and first set up our output directory. So where it says output, we'll click select and we're going to make a new folder and name this output. So we'll select there, click select for the keyframes here. This is asking for the painted on layers that it wants that you want to apply. So select for a keyframe and we'll select this key 27 that we set up. And then for the video, this is asking for the video that you want to paste this over. So we're going to click select we're going to select the PNG sequence that we set up at the beginning and click open. And you see the keyframe is already set up because we properly named it. Make sure if you're clicking synth and nothing is happening, just make sure the naming is correct. It automatically is saying 27. When we exported this out, we named it keyframe 27. Keep that in mind and click synth. All right. So when this has completed, you should now in your output folder have this giant uh, sequence of your animation with your frame that you painted over applied to it. So to bring that back into Premiere or After Effects, in Premiere you can go to File, Imports, and you want to find that output folder, select the first frame here and just make sure image sequence is checked on. You can see how EB Synth is doing its best to try and apply this over what we've created. Now you'll see there might be some moments here where things might be messing up, like the eyes for example. I think this as a first example looks pretty decent. You can see how the eyes and the mouth can get pretty screwed up. So what you can do 
Over here, this should be showing the normal time code, but if you right click on it and go to frames, you can see the exact frame that you want to pull to be able to fix your sequence. So 317. We can go over to 317 here and we can just delete all these frames after 317. Or what I like to do is control X and just cut them. I'll just make a new folder here called broken parts or something and just paste them in there in case I need those for any reason. So back in our main output folder, should now go all the way up to 317. So let's go back into Photoshop. We're gonna go back to our main um, export and let's go and find around the 300s. So 316, let's go and find a spot here where my eyes are open, my mouth is open. And then I'm just going to redraw everything on this frame. So I'll create another new drawing layer, name that drawing two. And I'll just repeat the steps that I did earlier to be able to draw this outline. All right, so there is our second drawing complete. Again, you can use your other reference to make any fixes. Like for example, uh, if the nose line is a little bit too small, go ahead and fix that just by using our brackets to kind of line that up. So you're getting the same color just so that those two match as best as possible. So I'll go ahead and export and we'll name this key. 321. Okay, so now we can open up EB Synth again. Let's go ahead and create a new output folder. So I'll name this output two. And then for our keyframe, we'll just swap that out and select key 321. Just so that it doesn't go and apply this frame to all of our already already finished frames, just make sure you set the stop to the frame before your keyframe. That way, whenever we do go ahead and click synth, you'll see that it starts at 320 and it's just gonna go through to the very end. So I'll go ahead and let this play through. And as you can see, as we go through in here, if I'm clicking near the end, our mouth has kind of disappeared. So what I could do is either create another new keyframe just by drawing all over again, or I can go ahead and just stop this because we've already fixed the part that we needed to, the part where I sort of blinked. We can just go through here, find whenever our mouth disappears. We can just delete those frames. All right, so let's drag the fixed frames back in. We're gonna control X and we'll put them into our first output right here, wherever we stopped around 300. And then we can go to that folder, uh, the broken parts from our first run through with EB Synth. Just grab all these other frames that go to the end, control X and put them in our master comp as well. And again, if you need to fix any individual parts, just go through, rewind, create new keyframes just to fix any parts that you may need to. The amount of keyframes you're gonna need to draw really depends on the shot that you are creating. And let's go back into Premiere and import those back in. So we'll go to file, Import, select the first one, image sequence. Now, if Premiere ever doesn't import the entire thing, it may just because of uh, it may just be because of changed file names. We'll go in and just see what frame it stopped at, which makes sense. We'll go to File, Import, and in that same folder, we'll just drag down to there because of the zeros here. 320 here, image sequence, and open that. One other side note here, make sure if there's any frame rate mismatch, you can always right click on the footage in your project bin, go to modify and interpret the footage. Just make sure that this frame right here is matching your normal footage that you had set up originally. All right, so we have pretty solid results here. Again, I could really go in and make a lot more keyframes if I was wanting to make this make this picture perfect. So the more time you put into it, obviously the better results you're gonna get. Just the time you're saving alone by being able to use EB Synth for all these frames instead of having to draw every single frame individually, you're already saving hours and hours of time. Some final touches here in Adobe Premiere, you could look up a little ultra key effect. You can drag it onto your composition and just click to take out the green and you can compose any other background that you'd like. You can use normal clips. You could draw something in Photoshop or After Effects, whatever. You have that transparent background, so it really is up to you. So I'm just gonna also show you the After Effects method before I finish this off. The exact same thing, you can right click, import. You can right click, import multiple files. Again, like before, select the first frame. You can force alphabetical order, so it's a little bit easier in After Effects with importing. That way you don't have to go in and import every little thing. Just click done, and here is your full composition. I think it's a bit nicer in After Effects to be able to composite things if you're going for a full animated story or music video or whatever. Instead of using ultralight, you could use the key light effect. Just drop that on there. You also have the freedom to apply any effects, whether in Premiere or After Effects. Drop in a little VHS look. And again, guys, the awesome thing about this process, you don't have to just trace whatever's, whatever's in your reference scene. You can go in and add any sort of 
creative touch to it. For example, I'll change my skin color here, give myself some horns. And there you go, as you can see, you can have fun with things like this. Um, you can create your own style. You can transform yourself. Just be careful if you're adding things on, like the horns, for example. It's gonna try and blend with what's in the footage. But it's definitely an awesome tool. It saves you a ton of time. Like I mentioned, I'm just showing this as an example. I highly recommend you guys go out there and just binge watch different Photoshop tutorials. You can use different styles, different brushes. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you in the next one.